and welcome. I am Pink Girl Teaches and on this channel we talk about narcissistic abuse awareness and share tips for recovery. So as you can see today I am going to be talking to you about the black sheep. Now I know that there are some people who are watching this that this will hit home. There are things that I know that I will say that will resonate with you. Stay with me because I have a message just for you. So narcissistic families um, tend to single out the black sheep for negative treatment or blame. And usually the black sheep is actually raised or groomed to become the punching bag. Now, why would they do this? Well, it's a family of narcissists. Now, let me just say this could be one parent. It could be both parents. It could be both parents tag teaming the child with the golden child, right? And um, real quickly, the golden child is who the narcissist will place on a pedestal. And that is simply to triangulate the other child. Um, and so don't ever for one moment think that the narcissist loves one child more than the other because we know that these creatures are void of love. They are unable to love. And so the purpose of the golden child is simply to fulfill the function that the narcissist wants to use that child for. And so while the child is on a pedestal, don't forget that the narcissist knocks people off the pedestal pretty frequently. And that child is not exempt from that either. The golden child, um, the golden child may just be the one that is able to give the narcissist the supply that they are looking for. And I want to, you know, I want you to roll with me for a moment while we talk about the black sheep and why the black sheep has been singled out for this abuse. Now, quickly about black sheep, as you can see from the image, black sheep are really a thing and they were actually viewed as less than in terms of market value because with unlike the white sheep, with a black sheep, you cannot dye their wool or I, th I believe it's a lot more difficult and more costly that it's not cost effective to dye the wool of a black sheep. And so that's why it was deemed of lesser value. The white sheep, you were able to dye that their wool into a lot of variations of color and therefore they were more profitable. The black sheep is just getting a bad rap when there's really nothing wrong with it. So, you know, sometimes you find that you have narcissistic parents who want to have children simply to fulfill things that they were not able to do in their own life. Sometimes they want to live vicariously through their children. And so that's why they have children. It's not that they want to be able to nurture and love this child or be there for the child, support a child and just grow their family and enhance their overall life and their joy with the child. The child is nothing but a means to an end. The child is nothing more than collateral damage that the narcissist wants to to inflict on other people and on the world in general. So when it comes to the black sheep, I want you to know, first of all, that the black sheep is very different, obviously. And not just because that, not just because like, you know, like the image that they are black, but there is something that the narcissist is able to recognize about the black sheep. A little while ago, a few videos ago, I talked about how the narcissist um, is a demonic entity, right? You hear us say it all the time. Many channels say it. Many people say it. Sometimes you have said it, right? And it is true that the narcissist is a demonic entity, but more so than that, they're driven. There's a demonic force that drives them. And we talked about that. That is the spirit of Jezebel that is at work in them. Now, because they are a spirit, right? It's a spirit that is at work. The spirit is able to identify other spirits. And so that's why they are able to see right through to the black sheep and single that particular one out for a reason. Roll with me. I'm, I'm on a, I've got something to say here. So dear black sheep that are out there and that are listening, they recognize that you were something that was someone who was more superior than them. It's not to brag, but it's just your giftings. It, it's your purpose. It's a thing that was placed in you before the beginning of time. And the narcissist is able to single out this. So you may find that the narcissist, you know, um, will use, will use the black sheep um, to get hits of supply. So where they may be feeling, where the narc may be feeling um, 
anger and frustration, they will project that onto the black sheep. Now, again, we're going back because this is a child. So imagine those feelings of anger and, and frustration being projected onto a child. A child can process those feelings, especially in a toxic environment. And so it, it internalizes as humiliation, shame, self-loathing. And these feelings continue to fester and grow. And it can lead to states of, you know, um, em um, just emotional turmoil, it's like just a tormented soul. And these people, like these black sheep, even the golden child, really, they are all deprived of their mental and emotional needs. And this causes a lot of instability in the lives of the children that are raised by these narcissists. So, you know, there's no glory in being called the golden child or being viewed as the golden child because you're merely a pawn. And again, there is no glory in being the black sheep, but there's nothing positive that can come out of a narcissist. So I want you to, you know, I want you to know that um, one thing that the, the these narcissistic parents do is actually, a, it's actually a term, it's soul murder. They murder the souls of their children. And this is where the children feel like, you know, they, they lose their zest for life. And sometimes, you know, it, you find that these are the children that end up committing suicide. These are the children that are depressed, that, you know, are are always you just on the outskirts you know like they're never they don't know how to integrate themselves in their classrooms or even with friends or they're just lonely because they don't have the skills or the confidence that they need to develop those relationships and this is all because of what their what their foundation is or what has been poured into them they feel less than but i i want to tell you that you were singled out for this kind of treatment for a reason you know, there, it looks like things may have been set up from the beginning to destroy who you are and everything that the narcissist comes into contact with, they're so great at destroying it because we know that the spirit of Jezebel comes to destroy, steal and to kill. But if you are able to escape, if you're able to pull out and, you know, one of the things that I feel like would be a great tool for recovery for those who have experienced this in their upbringing is really to create some space to create some distance between you and your family and it may not always be possible because of the age of the child but as soon as you're able to create that space and oftentimes what you find that narcissistic parents do is that they groom their child to believe that they need the parents and so instead of being able to move on they feel like i'm incapable I'm not good enough. I just won't survive. And they have been programmed to think this because the parents want to be able to have control over the child. Now I say the parents, it could be a single parent. It could be two parents, whichever one, but that child has been groomed. That child who may not be an, a, a, um, you know, a young adult or a full fledged adult feels like they can't leave. Like if you think about the movie, the Joker, like look at the mom. That man felt like he could not leave the home because he felt like I'm not good enough. I'm not solid enough. I don't have all the faculties to 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 be out there on my own. And so he lived with his crazy mom. But like, you know, these narcissists, they're energy vampires and they're really like they're just so parasitic. And this is why that when I say create distance, go no contact. And I know it's hard because it's your family, but they've been a disservice to you your whole life. They've tried to stunt your growth and they've literally performed soul murder on you. You need to save yourself. Sometimes, you know, sometimes what it's going to take is really like, just like I say, separating yourself, but also beginning to turn into yourself so that you can begin the process of healing. This is where, again, I will tell you, go for counseling, go to therapy. Get in touch with it. I mean, like view these videos on these channels. There are some great channels out there. Shout out to just say no to narcs. Um, Harry all over the top. Those are great channels. Visit them. Visit as many channels as you can. Don't listen to just one voice, but listen so that you can get a broad range of information and hear it from different perspectives. Take what's important to you. Take what resonates. And then, you know, if it doesn't, then let it fly. 
but listen to as many different voices so that you can build your knowledge, you know, so that you have more information, you know, knowledge is power. But also find a circle, find, and sometimes, you know, I say a circle, it may just be one person. Find somebody who will care about you. And I'm not talking about in an intimate way, but a sincere friend, you know, it, it could be the same sex, opposite sex, whatever. As long as the person loves you and is there to support you and walk you through, you know, walk with you through this process. Because everybody needs somebody. And I, you know, sometimes you hear sayings like, oh, you know, everything that you need is on the inside of you, which is very true. But we all need community. This is why even this community is important because we can lean in on each other and uplift and encourage and inspire one another. That's the point of this. That's the point of community. So reach out, make friends. And it may be hard, especially if this is not, you know, it's not something that you're used to. But, you know, take a leap, take a step of faith, you know, take that first step and and allow other people to reinforce you as you do the inner work, as you go for counseling, as you continue to tune in to all these channels so that you can reinforce yourself so that you can reaffirm yourself. And sometimes it's so that you can discover who you are, because a lot of the times, you know, when you hear these things about yourself, you're no good. You amount to nothing. We don't care about you. We don't love you. You're a burden. My life would be better without you. It's because of you that I'm this way. It's because of you that I'm a, an alcoholic. It's because of you that your daddy left. It's because of you, your mother left and went off with that other man or whatever. These are things that, you know, these black sheep hear in their lives. And so it's time for you to hear something else. And part of you hearing something else is, I want to tell you this. I said it earlier on that they recognize your light. And <laughs> darkness cannot comprehend the light. And this is why the narcissist is so crazy. They're so idiotic. And um, they continue to just show their foolishness. Because darkness does not comprehend the light, yet they think that they can dim you. But I'm here to announce to you today that your light cannot be dimmed. I'm here to announce to you today that you are valuable. You are a gift and we need you. And so we need you to do the work. We need you to connect to community. We need you to tune into yourself so that the super empath that is in you can be birthed out. You, you know, sometimes in life you find that you really have to hit rock bottom you know, pain is one thing that really can inspire change because when I think about myself, I had to hit rock bottom. I had to be at the point where I felt like, oh my God, if you don't help me, there's no help for me. If I can't figure this out, then guess what? I would rather die and suicide look pretty attractive to me. And this is another thing that narcissists will even encourage you to commit suicide. But I'm here to tell you, and I'm living proof. I've been there. I've been right there twice. I've been there. And I'm telling you, you will never, ever find true joy and meaning if you give in to the words of these crazy demonic entities. You will never find the true meaning. And so do the work. Redefine yourself for yourself. You don't need anybody else outside of you to tell you who you are. As soon as you begin to do the work, as soon as you begin to heal, as soon as you begin that journey, your true self will begin to meet you because guess what? The very things that you want, they want you. So as you take a step towards moving into the direction of what you want, what you are seeking is going to move closer to you and you will collide and you will begin to see what I mean when I say that you are the super empath. And that's why they wanted to shut you down because they know that your life destroys their darkness and it's a fear in them. It's that jealousy, that pathological jealousy that narcissists have because they try to kill you through all the things that they told you. Every negative word, every negative reinforcement was to make sure that you never reach your full potential. That's why I say that this is more so much more than just, um, you know, people, people can be evil, people can be cruel, but this very thing that drives them is like pure evil, like demonic. And that's why, that's why they target you. 
think about the, you know, the celebrities that you know that have overcome difficult childhoods, you know, and I, off the top of my head, I would say Oprah, I would say Albert Einstein, I would say Tyler Perry, I would say Joyce Meyer. These are all names of people who experience very adverse childhoods yet were able to overcome. Now, imagine if they gave in and said, you know what? I am, I am good for nothing. Nothing good can amount for me. And they just sat back and did nothing. We wouldn't have the gift that they are. You don't have to perform on their level. Sometimes your gift is, if you're a teacher, is to reach that one child that is in the classroom that will grow up and be the inventor of the next technological whatever that will be so well received or needed. Or it could be that neurosurgeon that will come up with a new technique to, 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 you know, to do something that impacts the world. Sometimes it's even yourself. It's your voice, it's your talents, it's your gift, and we need you. So I'm just here to encourage you that if you were the black sheep in the family, then just do the work so that we can celebrate you. And while you're going through the process, we're cheering you on and you're not alone. You're not alone. And so, you know, don't let the narc win because the narc is already a loser and you were designed to win. So I want to thank you so much for joining me today. If anything that I said resonates with you, I invite you to hit the subscribe button, turn on the notifications and like always take care of yourself and take care of each other.